Demons find me in the darkness of each night. They comfort me, kissing my scars, suffocating. I beg for more. Letting them wrap me up within their hands, I whisper my pain to them, begging them to keep my secrets safe within these walls. And the secrets within these walls haunt me. Kissing my soul, tasting the pain inside, etched in broken glass, these bittersweet dreams taunt me. The night's whisper is heard, begging to be let in, away from the dreaded world, and I close my eyes and listen. Silence fills me and steals my breath. The clock never strikes the same number twice, but the seconds that pass are all the same. Here I find my truth, so I close my eyes and listen. Welcome to Vorpal Tales, where we play terrifying tales and awesome adventures every day of the week, most days twice a day. Tonight we are playing Cult Divinity Lost, so due to the adult content and dark themes we explore in these stories, we encourage listener and viewer discretion. Be sure to check out our website, vorpaltales.com. See our complete calendar, get recaps of other shows, uh, links to our past archives on YouTube at youtube.com slash c slash Tales. You'll also find links to all of our social media, our Patreon, and our Ko-Fi. If you want to help us feed pets, give us a follow on Twitch and on YouTube to catch all our other awesome and terrifying adventures. Doomed Heroes, let the audience know who you are and what damned soul you're playing in tonight's story. Hey everybody, it's me, Ambrose. My pronouns are he or they. You can find me all over the internet as Am Changeling, because it me, Am Changeling. Tonight I shall be playing Denver Laurent, or Laurent, as some say, whose pronouns are he, him. He's the occultist, and he really, really doesn't want to be in this house, and he also has no idea if it's dream or reality, so we'll just, you know, go with it. Hello everybody, I am Steve. You can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade. My pronouns are he, him, and tonight I am playing Tyson Murphy, uh, the vet who has uncovered the truth of the extraterrestrials and will make sure everyone hears about it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Savannah. You can find me online at Miss Miss Emo Box. Tonight I am playing Eleanor Garnet. Uh, archetype is Descendant. Uh, yes, that is that is what I play. Hello, everyone. It is great to be back. I've missed everyone. As you can probably tell from my voice, uh, I've had to call out sick, like, all week. And now I'm back. Hooray. Uh, I will be playing Sephira. Uh, somewhat shady former mob fixer. Everything's fine. It'll all be great. We'll all survive. And I am Dwayne. You guys can find me on the internet at Made of Kimchi. I will be reprising my role of Thomas Anderson, seeker of all that is dark and dirty on the dark web. I am Rosie, and tonight I am playing Sin Barrow, the cursed, a mortician. And the body she bodies she works with speak to her in the voices of her murdered family. What could go wrong? Did, did, <clears throat> did you say you're a searcher of dark and dirty things on the dark web, Dwayne? Yeah. Oh jeez. Yeah, Back his character. He found me. His character is gonna be fine in this game. <laughs> what? What you find on the dark web? Oh my god. <laughs> and I'm Tyler. Elder Jekyll's online would be your game master. I'm killing at least two of you tonight. Yay. Denver, if you would, <laughs> regale us with the events of the last session. You are muted, my love. Which one? He had to switch earbuds. <laughs> Can you hear there me? we go. Yeah, you're good. Sweet. Can someone talk for me? Because I just switched over to wireless. Yeah, we're Hi. talking. Hi. How you doing? Hello. Birds. No, uh, I can't no. hear any of you. Uh, switch back to this. Eh. I hate when they don't switch. Grumble, grumble. I tried. Oh, well. Um. <laughs> okay. Recap. Sorry about that. I was trying to do something because these are broken. Only one of the earbuds works. Mm. <laughs> so 
I will attempt to work up with it on break. You can switch him after the recap because you won't be in the scene right away anyways. No, oh, okay, cool. Our scene opens on Cynthia. She turns away from the strange woman she woke up next to. When she turns back, the woman is gone. The bed doesn't even look slept in. She checks for her phone, relieved to see it's still there. The clock chimes noon. She's lost several hours. She should at least figure out where she is. Outside, Tyson gets out of his truck first, blocking Eleanor and Denver in. Eleanor wants to know why she's being blocked in. She threatens to call the cops, asserting her ownership of the house. As they bicker, a tall man steps out. Ah, yes, Miss Garnet, you've arrived. His gaze switches to Tyson's. Is that necessary, sir? Apparently not, he responds. While they speak, Denver walks away to go investigate one of the other strange cars. Eleanor walks into the house, where she finds Safira eating brunch. Safira immediately comes to the conclusion that she's been drugged and kidnapped, and pockets a sharp knife while the others are distracted. This is when Sin walks in, confused and forgetful. Safira asks Eleanor whose house this is. When Eleanor says it's hers, Safira asks who she works for. The question seems to offend Eleanor, who says she doesn't work for anyone. Assuming she must be some kind of Donna, Safira asks which family she represents. The Faust family, she answers. Sin has wandered into a room where the grandfather clock reads 12.04, but her phone and watch both say 11.17. She's lost another hour. Checking her phone, it seems confused. She asks Eleanor where they are and is told Oregon. Cynthia isn't sure how she got all the way to Oregon from Miami. Back in the driveway, Denver and Tyson meet each other. Tyson immediately warns Denver away from one of the cars, which looks as though it's been in a terrible accident. Yes, I know, Flynn, it's horrible. Tyson starts interrogating Denver, demanding to know where he took the man who used to be in this car. The house is evil, but you're scary, Denver exclaims as he bolts back into the house. He almost bowls over Saphir, trying to sneak out. Tyson carefully inspects the car. It's tidy, as if it wasn't used frequently. The back seat is full of tablets, laptops, and Chromebooks. He comes to the immediate conclusion that aliens have kidnapped this person, and he begins smashing as much tech as he can. Back in the house, the butler delivers a note to Eleanor. In elegant copper plate, it says, The one called Sin, the house wants her. Eleanor folds the note up and hides it in her top. The other package contains a knife and a revolver. She asks Sin what she did in Miami. She begins talking about her work as a mortician. She likes it because her clients are all dead and she doesn't have to talk to them. Every scene now has an available pool of five points called inertia. At any point in the scene, a player can spend an inertia point to add plus two to any pool. These points can be drawn on at any time. Inertia goes up by one rank every time it is used. The higher the inertia ranks are, the more the supernatural surfaces in the game. Switching back into game, Safira finds Tyson murdering Thomas Anderson's tech. She asks if he works here. When he says he doesn't, she asks for a ride out of here before she ends up being dissolved by acid in a bathtub. But Tyson launches into a severe, paranoid rant. Safira, crushed by finding someone this unhinged, starts inspecting the cars. But Tyson isn't going to let her leave with any of the cars. They get into a rather spirited discussion in which Safira, thinking she's going to be murdered, wants to leave. 
but Tyson is convinced we have to stay. It's not until Safira is upfront about her belief that Eleanor is a crime family magnate that Tyson reveals his own belief that she's an alien. But he does lend Safira one of his guns. Back in the kitchen, Eleanor introduces Denver to Sin. Denver and Eleanor bicker back and forth a bit while Safira slinks in to try and plug in the Chromebook she rescued from Tyson's tech murder spree. But it's dead, and there appears to be no power. She looks for a bathroom. Still dead. That might be what the weird popping sound was earlier. Tyson wanders in, muttering to himself, Act normal. Denver offers him brunch. Tyson continues muttering, Act normal, to himself, which causes Denver to make a comment about Tyson being a lizard person. I forgot about that. That was fun. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um... <laughs> That's about when he grabs a lamp and throws it across the room. Holy shit, I just wanted to know where the fuse box was, exclaims Safira as Tyson goes on a rant, telling Denver to get out of his head and stop reading his thoughts. I am not a reptilian, he yells as Eleanor re-enters the room with a platter of food. She asks Tyson his name, but he identifies her as one of the elite and thus a reptilian. While this is going on, Cynthia looks for the cars, but they're all dead. Not even a click. She just starts walking. But she notices that there's something wrong with the air. Like a heat shimmer, curving very weirdly. Oh god, was that crazy man right? She asks herself as she starts backing up. She trips and lands in something wet and squishy. A dead body. Now, she's wearing some of it. It's someone she doesn't recognize. A pink-haired woman who smells almost like someone cooked her. But Sin doesn't see any burn marks. She wanders back into the house and Denver freaks out over seeing the viscera. Sin describes the body. Denver recognizes it, though doesn't know how he knows. Eleanor knows exactly who that was. Tyson starts muttering about magic and dark rituals. Sin wants to know how Eleanor seems to know the woman. Eleanor admits to leaving Yvette to die in a burning basement. But Sin didn't see any evidence of burning. That means something else had fun with her body says Eleanor. That's when a fully reconstituted Yvette crashes through the doorway, intent on murdering Cynthia. She lunges at Sin with a knife. Eleanor wants this to be a fair fight, so she slips Sin a knife of her own. Sin avoids taking the worst of the blow, but is minorly injured. Denver throws the champagne bottle into the fracas, but it doesn't do anything to whatever the thing is that looks like Yvette. Tyson draws his own gun and opens fire on Yvette. She tries to protect herself with a silver serving tray, but still takes the hit. Yvette still lunges for Sin, sinking her knife into the meat of Sin's thigh, all the way to the hilt, inflicting a mortal wound. Eleanor sprouts black wings, shredding her clothes as they unfold. Something pulls itself out of her back, a black winged thing. Eleanor collapses as the thing leaps onto Yvette and tears her face off. That's when another Yvette clone bursts in with the knife. Cynthia passes out from the pain, only to wake up in an empty gray room. She's naked and uninjured. She circles the room, noticing some imperfections. Almost as if she's on the inside of a puzzle box. Manipulating the buttons, she's here with her sisters. One hammer murder later. And another hammer murder later. And another hammer murder later. The dream resets. There's more hammer murder. And another reset, 
and more murder. She breaks out of the dream. She's in a train car. No, she's back in the gray room. Is she in purgatory? There's a pattern here somewhere. I've already sacrificed everything I have to give you. I don't know what I have left to give, but if I have it, I'll give it. Just bring me back again. After five minutes, she hears a voice in her head. I'm here, child. How did you end up back here so soon? Oregon, she says. Fascinating. So the house has you. The voice responds. Sin asks the voice what it wants. It reveals that it's not friends with Hillside House and further reveals that Sin can destroy the bond between house and owner. Enjoy the AM ASMR of a dog crunching ice cubes. <laughs> it reveals that it's not friends with Hillside House and further reveals that Sin can destroy the bond between house and owner. It offers to help. When Sin asks its name, it offers the name Safariel and says it must find a way to break Eleanor since she cannot be killed. Back in the real world, as soon as Sin died, Yvette collapsed back to being dead. Denver freaks out and tries to perform CPR on Sin. Eleanor has herself propped up on a table. Whatever came up Whatever came out of Eleanor has vanished. Tyson goes on a wander, looking for the creature. He runs into Sephira, coming up from the basement in her unsuccessful attempt to reset the breaker box. She just wants to charge her Chromebook. You're with me, Tyson tells Sephira. Someone's dead already. What? says Sephira. Uh, the power's out in the house. This doesn't surprise Tyson. He describes Sin. Aw, she was cute. That's when we hear a scream. Sin has come back to life. Sophia calls back to Tyson. She's fine! The others convince her that Sin died. But Sophia still doesn't really grok what sort of situation she's in. When Eleanor discusses what the house wants, Sephira concludes she's in a house full of crazy people, and she just tries to play along. Eleanor tries to commune with the house, asking why there's a boundary. The house responds, saying that, You have returned, and we are no longer on the earth. To Sephira, she says, We have to atone for our sins here. We're no longer in the mortal realm. Sephira begins half-heartedly reciting the Hail Mary. Tyson asks why we don't just kill her right now. Denver wants to argue that she's immortal. Sephira, still thinking she's Adana, doesn't want to face the wrath of the other five families. Eleanor challenges Tyson to try, pulling the barrel of his gun to her temple. He fires. I'm going to do it anyway, Rachel. Don't read this, but Dwayne gets two XP. I do? There must have been something left in the recap. It literally no. says don't read this, but Dwayne gets two XP. But because it said don't read this, I had to read it. Dwayne got XP. Don't because... read it aloud. I just wanted to make sure nobody forgot that Dwayne got two yeah, XP. You got XP because it wasn't your choice to miss game because the inner the power grid was dumb. Oh. Wow. Thanks, guy. You're welcome. <laughs> it's only because you cuddle good. Steve! <laughs> ominous music. Tyson puts the gun to uh, Garnet's head. Time slows down for a moment. He pulls the trigger. The gun bucks. 
Garnet's brains explode all over the back of the room and across the table and into everyone that was standing there, which includes Sin and Sephira. Pushes her body back, falls to the ground. Still got that Garnet look in her eyes, though. Forever. Everything stops and everyone looks at Tyson. Uh, blood and viscera. Everyone's fine, right? I don't have any problems, but you're gonna. Uh, given that Sin's been told that Garnet can't be killed or can't die, uh, she's going to examine the body. Sure. Make a move. What do you got? <laughs> Read a person. <laughs> uh, <laughs> investigate. <Dead. laughs> okay, I'll go with it. I just wanted to hear what your idea was going to be. Investigate's uh, fine. Yeah. Uh, 11 and a success with a complication. Okay. At the exact moment that Thomas Anderson walks into the room seeing you and Sephira covered in blood and brain matter and a very dead garnet with you actually like looking into the hole in her skull and at the floor underneath of it going, yeah, he's really fucking dead. What the fuck is going on here? Burn and you didn't even get to meet me. <laughs> I will... For the record, if anyone who's not a cop asks, Tyson did it. You were just out at your car too, Thomas? Someone smashed all your laptops and computers except the two that you have in your backpack because you always have those two. I will turn and raise my gun to him, to Thomas. One's missing. And now some guy's pointing a gun at you that was clearly just used to kill this lady. I oh, think also... I'm at the wrong party. Also, there's like three copies of Sin on the ground in various states of dead. Dead? Or do you no, mean Sephira? Not, not you. Sephira. Okay. Not. You, computer boy, against the wall now. Who the hell are you? Get the fuck against the wall. Uh, Sin sort of lets go of. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I see Raptor Princess, and I. <laughs> What's your character's name? <laughs> Garnet. Garnet. <laughs> Sorry. You're good. I'll change it. Uh, sort of drops Garnet's head from her hands unceremoniously and says, do you have a working car? She's clearly, she's talking to Anderson. I, someone wrecked your car. He doesn't. Great. <laughs> Glad I missed probably that. The, probably the same person who wrecked your computers. Okay, um, we need to we need to back up here. Uh, guy with gun, you need to back up. I fire a shot, a, like missing t Anders, uh, t Thomas, but the gun clicks. The trigger goes all the way back. The bullet does not fire. It doesn't feel like a jam. It just didn't fire. I've seen some sick shit. This uh, is awesome. Uh. Can I go to a sidearm and then pull that out if that was not firing? Yes. Okay. You pull it out, same thing. This gun is working. You did you, you checked it yourself like an hour ago. Also, you just, also, I, I shot, just shot Garnet shot in the head. <laughs> no, I mean the sidearm. Got oh, got it. Then I will again put the 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 rifle uh slung on me i'll put the the gun back in the holster but i will take out my knife and start approaching thomas okay now he's coming at you with a knife having no weapons of his own uh for a split second he will think to use his 
computer as a weapon and then obviously shakes that idea away. I'll be like, ser seriously, guy, like, what, what is it? Why, why, why the hostility? What? Uh, when I, when like, I, backing up with his hands up. Uh, when I get to him, I'm just gonna, can I just kind of direct him to a wall? <laughs> yeah, unless you want to do a roll off. Yeah, you can just kind of intimidate him to the wall. <laughs> uh, when I get him, unless Thomas Anderson wants to resist. Uh, he will resist a little, but not enough to get stabbed in the back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> just token resistance. Just yeah. kind of playing, and I'm not gonna like, yeah. Um, but I'm just kind go of ahead, go pushing, ahead, pat pushing, down. pushing, yeah, putting you, and I'm gonna uh, push him against the wall. Just be like, you, you were gone. The aliens took you, and they sent you back. So I'm gonna pat him down, and I'm just looking specifically for places where incisions are made. Uh, for the chips to be put in from the aliens, where they where they chip uh, you? Where they put it in? Where's the chip? Um, okay, hold on a second. Uh, Thomas Anderson and uh, act under pressure. And then you can observe a situation, Tyson. Act under pressure. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Fifteen. Success. There's a side message, standby. <laughs> Wasn't me. Carry on. Yeah, I had a, a 15. 15, 16 what am, for me. What am I rolling? Observe a situation. I'm observing the situation? Okay. Yeah, you're checking for implants. Uh huh. Thomas is checking to see if he notices other things. Uh, I got an eight. Okay. You find no implants, no evidence of scars. You also don't notice what Thomas Anderson does. That now that every time you threaten someone now, it's like the house itself gets angry. Thomas notices. It's just a feeling. Like the walls are going to crush him. All right, are you good, guy? You good? Am I good? Does my body satisfy you? <laughs> it, it can. You know the aliens put it up your You're butt. Dead, they don't. They don't put it in your skins. I'll uh. I've seen it on the internet. You've only seen what they want you to see on the internet, and now it's a misnomer. There's other orifices they like to put their tractors in. And listen to me, this does not bode well for you, because that means that they didn't chip you, and I'll hold the knife up to him. That means you're one of them. You're wearing a skin suit, a perfectly sealed atmospheric skin suit. He's one of them, and I'll kind of like look back at everybody. How do I know you're not one of the enemies? Right, if I Tyson. am the alien. Tyson, let's just... Just take a breather. We know who the enemy is. You shot her. We're all safe now, okay? Yeah, yeah why the, did you shoot her? And then the moment I shoot her, he comes back. Him, the one who vanished, who disappeared, who was in the car and taken. And then all of a sudden, he comes back just now. Okay, How look, can he you was... not put this together? He was probably doing exactly what I was doing and trying to fix the power outage. I'm sorry. Okay, really? a guy with that many computers? You don't think he needs electricity? 
Yeah, but speaking of computers, what the fuck happened to my computers? I Every single one of you. Oh, Denver, can you do a check real quick? Can you hear us? I can hear you, yeah. Excellent, good. So you're switched. You can rejoin the scene now. Awesome. Um, everyone begins to hear the high-pitched, wonderful sound of tinnitus. Somewhere above, I have bad ears, and but below, I'm going to bleed out my eardrums. Somewhere between the two. So it's annoying and it hurts. It's not bursting anything. Is anyone else hearing that weird... Like somebody turned on a TV. Yeah, except not, but also kind of, but not. Did you scream away? Is that what this is? Betty really likes you, Steve. Oh. Summons me. Does it spank my Betty? Yup. Excellent. Carry uh. on. <laughs> Have fun, guys. I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. This is your scrambler ray? You're trying to scramble our brains with the sonic ray? Why would I try to scramble my own brain? <laughs> oh, 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 my ears hurt so bad. I'm like waving the, the knife around. Ah, I can totally hear it too. Okay, you should uh, probably put that sharp pointy thing down. You, you get know, away from it. I don't up. trust you either. You need, hold, here, hold on. And I like jumble around in my backpack. Pull one of the computers out and put it on the ground. Shift around some more stuff. Are you are you kidding me right now with that? I thought I destroyed all of those. No, this one's mine. The nickel radiation is going to kill us. Your rusty knife is going to kill us. House begins to vibrate. Um. Here, take this. And he just throws a bag of oregano. Adam. You know what? Let's leave. Let's leave. <laughs> Let us all start walking towards the front door and leave. And that Every is what's the door shut simultaneously like thunder when you say let's leave. Ah, oh, shit. There's other ways out of a building and... Time to break a window? I was gonna say, can I grab a chair and just hurl yeah. it through a window? Pick up the nearest furniture. <laughs> you can. Violence. Roll it. Twelve. You throw the chair at the door so hard you actually break the chair, but it's like hitting plastic. Like that wobble and it bounces off broken. You know it's not you, it's not the chair. At the door? No, he threw it at a window. Any other bright ideas? Uh, I would like to roll observe a situation. Roll it. Uh, 12, success with complications. What are you looking at specifically when you roll that? Or where? What are you observing at that moment? That will help formulate what you see. Uh, basically, Saphir is still very much like of the world. There has to be a mundane explanation for this. And so this is all weird. What is the actual explanation for what's going on?
There you go. It's up to you how you react to that with the group or don't. Uh, Safira will start mumbling like a uh, flashlight, fire, candle, a shadow. Uh, when she says shadow, she's pointing to Garnet. You're muted. I know, because I'm stopping myself from making quips because I'm dead. Valid. Uh, how does see through the illusion work? Do I actually have to do something, or do I just like? How does Normally, I make you do it, but you can try to do it anytime you want. It just doesn't mean you might not. It just means you might not get anything if there's nothing to get. I mean, I'll try. She knows this is weird. Do it. Yeah, any player can declare they want to try any move anytime. Uh, another eleven. A success okay. with a complication. Keep it together. Ah, that's a failure. Excellent. Please uh, lower your stress level by one factor. Uh, I didn't recover from nope. the left. So now I'm distressed. Yep. All right. Cool. You also lock eyes with the corpse. That's focusing on you. Except you don't see eyes. You like see black abysses. And when you stare into it, you can see somewhere very far away. You don't remember what you saw, but it was fucking horrifying. It was like all the things you were taught in Sunday school about what hell is, but somehow worse. The fire does exist, but who cares about the fire? It's what's not in the fire that matters. You see a fleshless being pulling itself out of that abyss and back towards the world. Like a human with no skin. And for a brief second, you see the place it's pulling itself out of is a gore covered stone slab surrounded by people chanting. Like a like a cult. And then you snap back to reality and it's just a dead body again, except Garnet's shadow is tearing itself out of the body and, in, and into the room from somewhere beneath it. And it's tearing too. It begins making ripping sounds. The tinnitus sound gets louder. Does anyone have a flashlight? I'll turn on the flashlight that I had had before. Um... The shadow remains solid as if it had substance. When the light hits it, it refracts around it. As if it was solid. I check. I I'll pick my gun out again and check to see if it works. Firing at it. That does seem to work, but it goes right through the shadow and it hits Garnet's body. <laughs> However many rounds you fire, that's how many extra bullets Garnet has now. Enver's going to check his pockets for salt. Sure, you can have some salt. I'm going to cool. need Tyson to keep it together. He's going to throw salt at the shadow thing. It goes straight through it and lands on Garnet. <laughs> Shot and salted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so Someone mad hand me a at double all a. of you. <laughs> so it could be a salt and battery. <laughs> Fired. Uh, Ambrose. <laughs> what did you get, Tyson? Should we throw some butter on her? You lose nothing. Twelve is a success. We should totally butter her. You up. keep it together. <laughs> you just devote. You just create new conspiracies now. Uh, um, the shadow finishes tearing itself out and screams, stunning you all momentarily. Uh, it makes you forget how to move your hands and legs and arms for a brief moment, and then it like forcibly smashes its way back into the Garnet's body, actually causing rips and tears in the skin. Once it disappears, the wounds begin to heal. Not like Wolverine, more like reversing what was done in time lapse, but backwards. We need to get out of here. Move. 
We can't get out. The door was one open. The windows yeah, weren't smashed. Yeah, I'm with you, man, but how? Different room. Just move. Like, we've got to be able to get out. You know, nope, and move nope. into the kitchen because that nope. door doesn't have a handle. It's a push door. Don't open the doors. Don't do it. They lead to other places and not the kind of places you want um, to go to. Thomas doesn't know this, so he will run and push for the door. It is just the kitchen. You got lucky. The kitchen doors are sealed. Uh, Sophia will follow Thomas into the kitchen. Tyson? Got lucky this time. I assume you're heading for the kitchen? Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of yeah. trying to funnel everybody out and move away. Uh, Denver and Sin? Sorry, go ahead. Uh. Yes, yeah, and we'll stick with the group. Does Garnet really look dead? Like dead, dead, like dead, deader than dead. Who? <clears throat> Eleanor. Oh. Me. No. Uh, I. And by this time, by the time three of them are through the door. Eleanor is almost his body is almost completely intact and the eyes are shut and breathing again. He's so he's going to start heading towards the kitchen. He's gonna turn around to take one last glance. And then seeing that she's breathing, he's gonna call back. Wait, hold on, she's okay? Kind of somehow. That's what Tyson is afraid of. Still not better, that's worse. <laughs> we gotta go. Well, I. If she's not dead, I mean, you all told me I was dead. She's not dead, so. I'm fine. Just covered in everybody else, but I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, but you're exactly. not creepy and evil. Thank you. Yeah. Hold, hold on. Yes, she's creepy, but she's not evil. For the love of God, just keep evil. moving. Go. Uh, this guy was right. She is an alien. <laughs> you know, I'm starting to think you're not actually wrong about that. Yeah, Sin. people tend to come around to my side when they see weird shit. Let's go. Yes, storyteller. Sorry, I asked Tyler about using occult studies in your side because that was a high roll look at that oh, face that's... love it that's interesting cool 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 do you head through the door you're the only one left because denver went through the door too hmm. so at this point it's me the eleanor and... thing is sitting up <laughs> the eleanor thing <laughs> i'll stay and talk to it her eyes fly open, and for a minute, they're just black, starless sky. And she's whispering something under her breath. Observe a situation, Sin. Great. I'm totally making all of the right decisions. Yep, this is all Did fine. Did Denver also stay? No, Denver went through the door. Uh, 13, success with complication. Keep it together. That's the complication. You hear her muttering, bring him to me. 17. And you see the shadow thing pull out of her and rush through the door into the kitchen. Ah! You do not lose any more stability. And then the shadow thing is dragging Tyson back into the room. Tyson, how do you react to this? It's dra- wait, hold on, what? <laughs> the shadow monster thing with the wings came into the kitchen, grabbed you by the throat, and is pulling you back into the room. Um... Its grip is like a vise. I... I mean, the, my, my first reaction would be to use one of my guns to try to blast away at it. All right. For future reference, Eleanor, for your cosplay. Right here. Bullet scar, never going away. Awesome. I will add that next time. Tyson is shooting the crap out of your shadow. Roll violence, Tyson. We'll keep uh, it together, Eleanor. Cool. Keep it together. Which is doubling for a concentration check. Cool. Any modifiers? Nope. Okay. 
success. Uh, success. 17. Rolled again. You actually disperse it for a second and fall to the ground, but then it reforms and grabs you by the hair. Uh, crit- I don't know. Mine is has a green box around it. So I rolled, you rolled a 10. a 10. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, success at 17. Ha! <laughs> 21. <laughs> You also rolled a 10. So, also <laughs> rolled a 10. So, success. Wow, okay. Keep going, Garnet. Okay. No, that's a question. You could switch to uh, another tactic if you want. Oh, well, what I was going to do is uh, she rises up and mm-hmm. goes to the manila envelope mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. the table mm-hmm. and grabs the thing that's still on the envelope mm-hmm. and cocks it. <laughs> Roll violence. <laughs> Ah. The manila envelope that never got open has a gun in it that was supposed to be used on Sphera. Or, no, Sin. No, Sin. I I threw the knife that was in there at Sin because the house gave me a choice. Either I shank her or I shoot her. Yes. Success. Uh, 16. Uh, avoid harm, Tyson. You're getting shot. Dodge. <laughs> well, uh, what's what's 12, the slalom? So success with complication. Okay. Stand by. I need to do a quick memory refresh because it's been forever since we played this. <laughs> yes. Tony's okay. like did Savannah just choose violence instead of Harry? <laughs> you gained one critical wound, Tyson. <sighs> you gonna pull the trigger again, Garnet? No, I... he shot me once. I shot him once. Okay. You let the shadow go. Me? No, Garnet. <laughs> Garnet's controlling it. You're just fighting it. Oh, thanks for the boost, Tony. Um. I have it returned to me. You're dropped to the ground with a bullet hole, Tyson. It did not instantly kill you because you moved just the right time, so instead of hitting your heart, it hit your left lung. Okay. Do I get to. Don't I get a fortitude roll? I'm not sure. Nope, how that's works. avoid harm. Fortitude doesn't help with bullet wounds. Avoid harm can prevent you from instantly dying. That's really it. She, like, cracks her neck to the side. Okay. <clears throat> a bullet for a bullet. He should be fine. Someone needs to stabilize Tyson or the critical injury will kill him. Or not. <laughs> oh, at, at seeing all this, Thomas would have shut the door and tried to push the refrigerator or whatever ice box they have in front of the door. You gonna try to go in there, Garnet? Uh, at this, I mean, I don't have a, a reason to go after Thomas or Sapira okay. or Denver at this moment. I just have Sin and a uh, bleeding out Tyson. Is Tyson back in the other room? No. Well, he's he's in. You'd have to drag room. him. Oh, yeah, he's between rooms. The shadow was trying to pull him back to Eleanor. He resisted. I will drag the crazy man back. Okay. Am I still able to take actions? Yeah, you just have a critical injury. You can still do stuff. Okay. But if you're not healed soon, you will die. Can I see Eleanor? Yes. So, um, I will kind of prop myself up um, as best I can as as he's dragging me. Um... And I uh, remember I had the pistol, but I also had the mm-hmm. automatic rifle. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to. <laughs> there's a there's a duffel filled with much more guns, by the way, <laughs> somewhere in this uh, house. Oh yeah, yeah. There's Jeez. there's lots of uh, guns running around here. Um, I am going to 
uh, as he's kind of dragging me, kind of, you know, pull my arm back out as best I can with the bullet wound, um, and shoulder the, the rifle and look to her and just be like, uh, so the shadow monster shot me. Is that right? No, oh, I shot oh, you. you. I have the gun. Oh. She tried to use the shadow monster to drag you back into the room. You actually beat its ass, so she got impatient and shot you. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> you managed to punch the shadow alien. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to level just at her and just be like, Alien Queen, bitch! And just bop, 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 bop. <laughs> Rachel, check your side, please. Um, and I'm just gonna uh, pull auto. I was gonna say a bullet for a bullet, but obviously you wanna, you wanna go. Okay. Now, thank you, Rachel. Steve, I know you said you're cool with the thing, and Eleanor knows that you're cool with the thing. Yeah. Uh, we can interrupt the scene with the NPC, or the NPC can appear too late. Decide now. I, I wanna. S- how do you want it to go, Tyson? Let's see how this plays out. I- Let's do it. Both of you roll violence. Okay. Look at Ambrose's <sighs> face. Success. Success. Okay. It's gonna be one of them games. Both of you roll avoid harm. Oh no, this isn't a resisted roll. They're shooting each other and they're both hit each other. <laughs> so, I'm rolling what? Avoid harm. It's not gonna matter as much in Tyson's case, but it'll matter in Eleanor's. Uh, success with complications. You have one serious wound because you were essentially fully healed. Okay. What happens, though, is the bullet hits something vital. Armor leg. Choose now. Leg. Right in the left knee. You cannot run. Okay. Uh, success with complication. 13. You already had a critical injury. This would have caused a serious injury. Tyson gets blown away. <clears throat> You're shoving the refrigerator, Thomas. Tyson's body hits it. He's super dead. The bullet came, hit him in the neck, and came out the side of his head where the temple is. On a ricochet. Did is this like... serious or critical? For you, serious. Okay. I'm I'm going out on a limb here. I'm gonna say this is a very short season of cult, and that's why you're killing everyone. <laughs> Is that what you think? I think so. Tyson! Yes. Please fix your title for us and zoom. <laughs> You're dead. <laughs> um, well, no, Sin is gonna... You, I'm gonna send you a side thing, Tyson, in a second here. Uh, okay. Sin's gonna look at uh, Tyson's corpse and just go, well, that's probably safer. Uh, Garnet shuffles over to Tyson's body, grabs his ankle, and starts dragging him back into the middle of the room. Thomas is seriously freaking out. He's like, what is what is wrong with these people? Nothing it's, is wrong. It's not really the people, it's the house. It's definitely the house. Denver, that's very sweet of you, but you both know that's me. Well, I didn't say you weren't the house. It's very presumptuous of you. I mean, you know, the last time we were here and you tried to murder everyone. I didn't. I tried to stop the reporter from fucking with rules that she didn't understand. But you you unlocked the house anyway? I thought, um, you know, unless I was hit on the head a little too hard. I threw the champagne Got all bottle that, at her, Steve? not you. Yeah, I'm going to need a few minutes, though. Oh, yeah. From from behind oh, the door, you hear... Okay. From behind the door, you hear Thomas say, Can I please leave your body, then? No, because we're not on the mortal realm. We're in hell. Leaving here would essentially be walking your body and your soul into a place that it cannot return from. 
So how do we get the How house? is that different from here? Here you are safe. It looks it looks down at Tyson. Yeah, uh, so if you're real quick at Tyson's dead body and say clearly not. Observe a situation sure. for Thomas Anderson, Denver, and Safira. <laughs> Lupine Vendetta, I fucking love you. <laughs> Betty, does that count for a summon the Elder Gods? Have we pleased Betty? Yeah, 22. Have we? Six, That's six, what I'm asking. We murdered I also got for a them. I was gonna murder him regardless, Something so I said I would have allowed it. <laughs> oh well, fair. <clears throat> fair enough. She would have tried. Well, actually, she wasn't. She was fu perfectly fine being bullet for a bullet. So. Okay. Thomas Anderson, what'd you get? Twenty-two. Safira, what'd you get? Thirteen. Denver, what'd you get? <clears throat> it says a twenty-two, but it's actually a twenty-one. It's complicated. You all notice the sin is not only being quiet, but is positioned in such a way with the body language to indicate I'm with Eleanor. <laughs> Rosie's face is just like, oh. oh I, I made decisions. Know. Sin is aware of what's happening. <laughs> this was Sin's idea. Oh. And, and Sin also seems like completely unperturbed by the resurrection, almost like she knows what's going on. Yeah, she does not expect Tyson to be dead for very long, to be honest. Oh, that one. Yeah, Garnet expects. Anyway. I won't hurt you unless you try to hurt me. Also, Safira, I know you and him were close and you probably know where he stuffed his shit. I'm not telling you that. I know. It's a fair warning that if you try to come at me with any of his shit, the same thing will happen to you. Lady, I just want to leave. Don't we all? I'm with her. I get here. I leave to go get a Mountain Dew. I come back. <laughs> and <laughs> this this guy who is now dead tried to kill me. You died, but you're not. I mean, this There's would make for two dead awesome... Safira's in the room, too. No, yeah. not and one Safira. living Safira. None. No. Rachel's other character. Yes. Which is not named Safira. I don't even know who these things Yvette. are. The vet? Yeah. There's dead vets all over the place. Oh, those are the things that killed me. Ooh, little dead vet. Uh. <clears throat> Is the basement open? Lady, I don't even know where the basement is. Hold that thought. <laughs> sure. The basement's normally the worst place to go. Just gonna put that out there. It's where all the hauntings happen. That's where all the bodies are kept. Stop! Stop! Yeah, those are addicts. <laughs> Stop! Why are you killing each other? Who the fuck are you? Stop! Stop! You can hear me? Yes. Oh god. Yeah? Why are you killing each other, for the love of god? At that moment, it it's like a guy steps out of the air and just appears. In the middle of the dining room. Huh. Describe thyself physically. Don't you remember? We all... We were friends. And this guy walks out. Middle-aged bad tan bad tan overly white teeth um he's he's tall he's just over six feet but not like towering intimidating um and wears an overly expensive suit with a big watch um and just very overall well put together and this kind of we were friends but you can finally hear me oh thank the lord thank you Clarify for the audience. 
Steve's old character is for real perma dead. This is a new PC. Conspiracy theorist was murdered. I've been, I've been trying to call out to you for hours. Are you the free real estate guy? <laughs> and then when you all lock eyes with him, like he it was like he was out of phase and then phased back in suddenly. Perhaps that was what he means by can you finally hear me? Uh you all get a weird sensation in your heads when we enter flashback mode. The flashbacks will be out of order. Meaning there will be some before this flashback and some after. I will clarify each time. One second, I gotta set someone up to help for this. <clears throat> You're all teenagers. And you all are friends. And this is going to be weird for you, Steve, but you are both of your characters. Okay. Um, because you're both there. <laughs> there is also another person there. Previously. Uh, un previously unrevealed to the group. I'm assuming that's the new character. That is an NPC. Yes, hold on. Oh. You are both of your characters, and there's an NPC we have not revealed to anyone yet. Oh. Remember, uh... You're all teenagers. You can determine your ages uh, because we never set how far apart you are or how close you are to each other, but you are some version of 13 to 19. And you are all hanging out in this house. It's a very different house. The vibe is calming and relaxing, and Garnet is hosting. Garnet usually does big sleepovers for all of you because uh, you've known each other for years and you're best friends. Garnet's rich as fuck, so why the hell wouldn't you hang out at her house where you have literally everything you want as a bunch of teenagers? Her parents are never there, and the nannies, she's got them wrapped around her finger. And you all know each other. You all would refer to each other by first name, including uh, Randy, the other new person, who is an awkward, nerdy teenager with greasy hair. He's got some inborn charisma, and he's cute, but if he could put himself together, but, you know, he's kind of a hot mess. We are probably best friends. Yes, you and Randy would be pretty close. Randy is the as yet unrevealed NPC none of you had any knowledge of. Unrelated to any of your backstories. But Got it. in the flashback, you all know him. You've been friends for years. You can determine as a team if there's a hierarchy of how long you've been friends. If some of you joined later in the group, some of you joined earlier, it doesn't matter to me. But as we do flashbacks for the story, we'll be forming the backstory of how you were very close friends until something terrible happened that tore you apart. Your present day characters have no memory of any of this, except apparently Billy Wayne Grant, who just burst into the scene and created a flashback. So Garnet, you can open the scene. You're trying to convince uh, Sin to have Sin's first drink because he broke into daddy's special cabinet with the really expensive whiskey. And everyone else has already had a couple glasses and most of them are pretty tipsy, maybe blasted. Except Sin, who's like, I don't, I don't wanna get in trouble. <laughs> begin <laughs> sin come on loosen up uh I, I'm, I'm good someone should what be the designated driver come on we all know we're not going anywhere i was gonna say someone should not smell like booze in case your nanny comes checking on you because you need a babysitter clearly <laughs> okay like any of the employees here are going to ever care what I do. 
They get paid to make sure that this place stays pristine. No one gives a shit what I do. Well, I give a shit what you do, so maybe we we shouldn't... Like, maybe you let me just stay sober, and I make sure you guys don't do anything too stupid. She, like, pinches your cheek. She's like, you're so cute. <sighs> Fine. You're missing out. It's really good. Who knows when the next time you're going to have a bottle that's, like, worth... She, like, looks it over. Several hundred dollars. Like, what? Like, $500? Come You've all got on. side messages too, except Eleanor. I was just like, I don't got nothing. <laughs> uh, Denver, let's play truth or dare. Uh, so I you drew... say that, you say that, and immediately, hold on, and immediately, Denver and Thomas look at each other, and Thomas looks slightly jealous because they're a thing in this flashback. Who's a thing? Denver and Thomas. Oh. <laughs> also, Safira and Sin are a thing. Let's make it weird, Steve. Are you with your other character? <laughs> I love myself. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe let's not do that. In a tree. That's perfect. Uh, I you can finish sending me the side message. That was a joke. <laughs> Not gonna make you date yourself. But you if could. anybody could do it, it would be Steve. Yeah. Although, uh, since we're teenagers, Sarah... we're <laughs> experimenting. Since uh, Sophia and Sin are together, uh, Sophia will be trying to persuade Sin to take the drink, but in the like, no, baby, it's gonna be fun. It's something we can do together. Uh, how drunk I'll is look Sophia? Out for you. Um. Probably baby's first drink drunk. Oh. So like drunk for a teenager but not trash. Sophia is much more convincing to sin than Garnet is. She'll at least be holding a glass now, if not drinking it, but she's at least like Yay! She like smells it Look, and makes that face. <laughs> let's put some some ice and a little soda water in it, so you're not, you know, drinking straight liquor because that sucks. Tyson is on his phone. Oh my God, I missed that episode of the X Files because this is clearly in the '90s. Um, whereas Billy Wayne has his arm draped around Tiffany, his girlfriend of the time, which you all know, but she's not really part of the clique. She's just here because you know, this is who Billy Wayne's banging right now. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Wayne banging Grant. No, no. She's very much a Tiffany, too. No, we're saving ourselves for marriage, obviously. Hmm? Why would you do that? <laughs> oh my god. I got the voice crack. Carry on. <laughs> I think you broke Ambrose. You did. <laughs> Ambrose, are uh, you so in love with your boyfriend? That's your boyfriend, Ambrose. <laughs> <laughs> Denver will scoot up and boob Thomas's nose and then blush furiously. <laughs> so what Ambrose what do do. does normally. Shut up, <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> but at least you've finally relaxed a little bit, Sin. All the rest of us are already low down. She'll take, right, like, right. a sip. I'm assuming it's... It's smooth and wonderful, but it still burns because you've never had whiskey before. So something Rosie would enjoy, but Sid is, like... <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, I feel like Safira at this point will commit a cardinal sin against alcohol, uh, but she's a teenager who doesn't know any better. And put some Coca Cola in Sin's glass. Oh, that really makes expensive me sad. scotch. That makes I me know. so sad. It, so sad. <laughs> it makes me sad too. I don't even drink scotch. And at that moment, the door opens, and the last member of your group walks in. Another person you've all been friends with for a long time, Eleanor, if you would. 
Uh, ha, ha, ha. Uh, yeah, so this dude walks in. Uh, super tall, uh, total jock, blonde hair, blue eyes, physique, stupid, charming smile. Um, probably has a Letterman jacket on for whatever reason. Um, just, you know, so everyone knows he's cool. Uh, <laughs> Is this the guy that's been out of high school for like two years, but he still no. shows up? No, no, he's no. in the same grade as Garnet. Yeah, uh, you would know that he is Garnet's best friend, uh, and <laughs> and probably the only person that you see Garnet be soft with at all, because otherwise, uh, she's still a sassy asshole to everybody else, but nicer now. Ten yep. years in the past, or whatever. He walks in. What's up, losers? Did you finally get Sin to take a shot? No. Oh, my God. Come on, Sin. What the hell? He walks up to Garnet and gives her a big fat kiss on the forehead. Mm. Oh, Ooh. Shit. Oh, shit. Shut pressure, up, anybody. Thomas. Where have you been? Probably playing, playing like, sports or something. <laughs> Getting the good shit. Pulls out a bag of what's clearly Molly. Oh. It's going to be a party now, you guys. And then he he smiles at all of you, but the smile lingers and gets a little bigger when he looks at Randy. Garnet doesn't have a poker face. (laughs) (laughs) He starts handing out Molly. He gives the first one to Garnet, but the second one to Randy. Thomas should know what this is. So he'll be like, oh, wait, 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 hold on. He goes over to Garnet's like CD collection <laughs> and or mini disc collection. <laughs> Starts rifling through, trying to find any type of rave music he can. Something something techno-y. Maybe like Sandstorm. Final side message for Sin. The hooch is strong, Sin. <laughs> okay. He finally gets to Sin with the last Molly pill, and he gets right up in your personal space, because remember, this guy's like the sex machine of teenagers. And he gives, you that, he gives you that pants-dropping smile. He <laughs> says, you gonna party with us or what, Sin? Uh, I will. I'll take Sin by the hand. And when she looks at me, she's like, I'll, I'll say, like, I, I will if you will. Okay. When you open your mouth to say okay, he shoves the pill in it and then kisses you real hard to force you to swallow it. I'm going to kick you, him. Once you, once you do, he apologizes to Saphira and giggles and backs off next to Garnet. This is not unusual behavior for this guy. In your oh, okay. Mind. You are aware that... As far as you know, he only has any emotional attachment to Garnet and Randy. That's my girlfriend. Get your own, you creep. But Randy has never reciprocated. <clears throat> Was that You're really all... necessary? No. He laughs and kisses you on the cheek. Thomas would have already Molly swapped with Denver. <laughs> <laughs> it, would, it would have already happened. <laughs> it would have already happened. Oh, I, I don't know. I've I've never done drugs before. Just you know, had some drinks and. Denver, keep it together. <laughs> Denver, keep it together. At first, I forgot that that was a thing to roll, and I was like, "Okay, <laughs> I'm trying." Like, <laughs> ooh, fourteen successless complications. Uh, so with complications you swap with the kiss but then you make him think you swallow it and when you take your next shot you actually slip the pill into the whiskey where it dissolves but you had it in your mouth for a little bit too long and you're going to get a little high does Billy Wayne take the drugs and does he let Tiffany um Wow. (sighs) 
Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Okay. What about the conspiracy theorist? Because I'm unsure if either of your characters would. At this point, your conspiracy theorist is just a massive lover of the X-Files, essentially. He absolutely would not. Okay. Yeah, that would definitely I mean, he, be... He, 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 you all notice he takes it and then just kind of drops it somewhere. <laughs> Doesn't want to be rude to the alpha finger quotes, but isn't taking that shit. Nothing changes uh, my brain chemistry. Then he said, and then you all make small talk for about 10 minutes when uh, William, whose last name is New Haven for anyone who wants to know, another very rich family from the region, uh, says, I'll be right back. I got an idea. It's about the time it's hitting everyone except Steve's dead character. And he comes back a second later and he's chugging a glass bottle of Coke and finishing it. And he says, you know what this means? Why? It's an empty glass bottle. Oh no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh no. But I already ha have a boyfriend. Yeah, I think this is a little bit. A little bit much, maybe. Randy and says, Sim I'd play, and he's looking at Garnet the whole time he says it. Okay, well, you can play all by yourself and then just make out with your fist or something. Denver, come on. Yeah, Denver, you don't want to play? Come on, let's just play. But, oh, okay. One little kiss. Send in Safira. You can excuse yourselves. You can play. Uh, so Safira feels like she's pressured Sin to do enough. So she's okay. just going to look to Sin and be like, do you want to play? Otherwise, we can just, like, clear out of here. Why don't we go find somewhere a little private? I don't need to play with them. Oh. Yeah, Use any of here. the bedrooms. They're all made. <clears throat> you do have a favorite as a couple. <clears throat> a favorite. All the, yeah. all, the, all the beds are different. So, you know, everybody, you've all got a favorite as your little groups. So uh, I feel like Sephira will take Sin uh, out of the basement. Or wherever we're at, like we are not in the basement. You are in the family game room. Yeah. <laughs> All right, family game room. Oh, we're not in the basement. Rich, Wait a second, people. is this is this Eleanor's house? This is like this the, house. Yeah. This but is oh, before shit. it was evil. It was not evil at this point. We made it evil. Oh my god. I'm just sorry. Right. All right. Teenage girls. Teenage girls. Faith to black. We're yes. Right here. Have exactly. fun, ladies. What about Billy Wayne Grant, Tiffany? Do it. I feel like hell no, but we'll see what Steve says. Oh. Uh, no. Oh, <laughs> Billy. Yeah, no, Billy Wayne's just like. <laughs> Go you can ahead. stay and watch, though. Go you ahead, please. please. This will be entertaining. What? I'm not good enough for you, Billy? No. She gives a wink over to Tiffany. <laughs> Tiffany says, oh, I'm more than enough for this big boy. Yeah, I know. Just right. She says it like a Tiffany. Steve's other character declines, but you're all well aware Steve's other character isn't into anybody, really. <laughs> Just his conspiracies. Let's go. The bottle is spinned. It's spun. It's spun. <laughs> it's spun. <laughs> it's the Tyler, bottle. what's in your glass? Thomas ends up making out with Randy. Denver ends up kissing Garnet. It's not good. Neither of those are good for anyone. But then the bottle lands on Garnet William. And he kind of shrugs and says, Sure, why not? Well, when you say Aww. it like that. It's a foundational moment for Garnet because of your backstory. What happens next? For William, it's just a party. The flashback ends and you're shot back into your regular <clears throat> bodies, except you remember every detail of the flashback. In this room, with Billy Wayne Grant, who's suddenly there, as you all look at your dead friend. I'm staring at Sin. And Garnet, now that that memory is where he fixed itself, you remember the importance of that day. What pray tells the importance of that day? 
you don't well, you don't remember yet, Denver. That memory only belongs to Garnet so far. Um okay. He was never that fun at parties anyway. And she turns around and walks back to the dining table. Damn. <laughs> uh, our friend is dead. Our friend? No, that, that none of that can be real. We would have remembered it. We oh. just did. No. Oh. No, we it, didn't. It's all real. Are you... we? What is Oh my it? god, we're all still on Molly. Billy. You have a picture of the group in your wallet still from when you graduated high school. Oh, here. All of you here, and I'll, I'll take out my big-ass wallet. Uh, <laughs> Custom and... leather. With all of his bajillion children, anyway. Um, <laughs> he has a school photo for each one. Yeah, actually. Just bajillion <laughs> children all in their uh, church school uniforms and everything. And I will take out one of the pictures of us. Here, look at this. Just and give me space. Give me space. And I'll uh I'll go over to. So hold on. There's Tyson, who's dead. Tyson is dead. No one else is dead. But Randy and William are not here. Okay. And I You've not seen to... them at all yet in the house. And I go uh, to uh... the Reese, the reporter. She's just a reporter, right? Correct. Okay. Just a reporter that I. Ganked. It's fine. Uh, <clears throat> I go to Tyson and I make a big obnoxious show about giving some sort of like last rites like prayer over his body. And I'll, I'll just lean down. Oh lord! Accept this sinner into your heart! And I'll put like my thumb in blood and like make a cross on him. He knew not his brain took him to the deep deep despair and he lashed out with anger and he was struck down please from this place of evil take him into your pearly gates hail satan you know from what Greece. roll influence other billy uh uh okay by the so, way denver denver will have interrupted your prayer with hail satan full of maybe grace. maybe <laughs> depends on this role oh he's influencing oh. you guys Hold on. Denver, really? or Billy's always had a way with words. That's his thing. All right, hold on. Oh, I've got to remember what these powers do. So, this is a plus charisma roll for power purposes. You really so so whenever your aura roll stole. Did you consider my aura truly noticeable? Oh yeah. Okay, so this is going to actually be a couple of rolls. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he has a lot of... This is like this is his whole shtick. Um, okay. okay. Uh, um, so I get to roll a soul, which is a lot. That's a 19 soul. Wild success, okay. Which means I can catch a stranger's attention, change a person's disposition towards me from either aggressive to suspicious, suspicious to neutral, or neutral to positive, or make opponents perceive me as harmless. So, my charismatic aura, I, I can change someone's disposition from neutral to positive. You were all actually touched by this oratory. He's always had a way with words, and now you remember your friend, and it's a bunch of bullshit at first, but then Billy actually talks about fond memories. Um, and then for the actual charisma influence uh -huh. role. Uh, really? That seems low. Dang. Oh, that was just one. Haha, -ha, that's why. Tense, yes. That's much better. 16, so another full success. And you all, you can react to this how you want. You feel like you can trust this guy, even though he's a little weird. Which I is remember. not anything you do with each any of the other rest of you. The connection uh, to your tenuous. 
and at the, the more he keeps going, the more he gets into what's, you know, kind of this big show of the whole thing. I remember the time. I remember a time. And I was at my absolute lowest, having lost my dear, my dear dog, Boomer. And it was Tyson. And it was Tyson who comforted me. And he took me. He took me by the hand and he said, Billy Wayne. Boomer's in a better place now. Boomer! He's chasing birds in heaven. And now Tyson is there with Boomer. Shooting those birds down. I miss you, Tyson. Because they're government drones? Everyone, please come close and silently remember a thought of Tyson. I mean, you kind of remind me of Kane from Poltergeist, but your words are so soothing. Mm. <laughs> um, if you are who you say you are. While that's happening, by the way, before you finish that thought, Dwayne. Thomas and Denver lock eyes, Saphir and Sin lock eyes, because you remember the other things. <clears throat> Carry on, Thomas. It unlocks memories beyond that flashback of your time together as a couple. You can work out with each other why and how it ended. But those feelings and memories are now there for all four of you. What was the color of my favorite hacky sack? Uh, rainbow, obviously. That. <laughs> Knowing that that was the correct answer, <laughs> Thomas is like, mm. <laughs> Wait, is that Dwayne's favorite color of hacky sack? No, that was going to be Thomas's answer. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Beautiful. So he, he would be like, oh, shit. That's okay. I'm, I'm on board with you, preacher man. Garnet Eleanor looks real just... allied, annoyed. Yeah, uh, Garnet's still just sitting at the dining room table. Logan, very unattached from the situation. Is there still stuff for like mimosas? Is there still like? Yeah. yeah, she has the bottle. She's gonna go and get some of that. Like, not not even bother with a splash of the orange juice at this point. You would have to pry the bottle out of Garnet's hand. Look. Either or go in the that... kitchen and get another one. Oh, then she'll go get her own at okay. this point. It's not as good a brand, but there's more in there. That's fine. Uh, Safira will follow Sin to the fridge. And just very awkward. The awkwardest you've ever seen her. She's like, uh... Hey? Uh, how have you been since graduation? <laughs> um... It's fear and sin. Let's make it even a deeper connection that's more awkward for role playing. You were each other's firsts. Oh, great. <laughs> that's uh, not true for Thomas and Denver. Yeah. Well, uh, I have a I have a dog. Her name is Polly. It's a great way to break the ice. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? Boomer and Polly. Uh I'm on the run from the mob. Oh, so you're you're doing great, then? Yeah, it's not my fault. This guy I worked for betrayed the dawn, and now the whole family's got to go. So, what do you do for the mob? Right now, just try not to let them find me and bury me in the pine barrens. Okay. Reasonable. Yeah. Um, that was a lot. I shouldn't have put that on you. No, that's okay. I'm just trying to be honest about where I'm at. Okay. You don't want me to do the same. Believe me. You don't want to know. Um, okay. Can I see pictures of your dog? Oh, sure. 
And if her phone is working, she'll... going to say, it, on reflex, you pull out your phone, and it, yeah. it is working. Great. There's, like, literally an album just of dog pictures. I and feel she like will... Sophia is just going to, like, surf the wave of awkwardness on a sea of dog pictures. Yep. Yep. And mimosas. Mimosas, dog pictures. I feel like we kind of post up in the kitchen and it's probably super awkward, but less awkward than being in the dining room with everybody else. I feel like this might be like our emerging dynamic or like they are being weird. We're just going to go off and do our own thing together. Potentially. Like that's probably back in high school. That's probably how it was in high school too. Seems likely. Yeah. And Sin will just tell you all about her dog and the vet tech that she had some kind of weird connection with that was always really great with her dog. What about Thomas and Denver? Not necessarily with each other, but just in the scene. Every time Denver looks up at Thomas with the sudden reemergence of memories, he blushes furiously and looks away. What about when he remembers he actually kissed Eleanor? Who, you know, you kind of hate now. We'll say that pops into his head like the way that you said it, and his eyes just get all big, and he just, he's staring for it, and then he just looks up and stares at Garnet like, Fuck. Uh, when Denver looks at Garnet, like, for once, like, since Denver has seen her in this version of herself, like, there's not the complete facade of her being a total dick. And she's just sitting there, feet Full on the observe. table. Roll read a person, Denver. mask slips you might get something there's a success lot success of... with complications a 13 I think that means you get to ask me a question two questions one one oh boy I have to find the list of questions <laughs> uh, so what can you use to your advantage What's being hidden from you? What seems strange? The rest of them don't apply to this reading. What's being hidden from me? Wait, no, I read the no, wrong list. No, you I read the wrong Are you list. lying? How do you feel uh, right uh, now? How do you feel right now? What do you wish you would do? How do you get to the character? Those three. How do I get to Blink? Oh, those are also really good. Also, I got you, Mike. I'll get to that in a second. Um, I want to know what Garnet wishes in the uh, rest of that question. <laughs> once, like in this moment, what she regarding like, the house, what does she wish regarding the house? Uh, like, I guess... Uh, hold on, hold on, just... hold on. Mm? Oh, God. Check, 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 check your side, Garnet. And then also this for Denver and your side. Um, Lie to, Wait, no, Denver's a heap. Lie to him. I'm that's mixing up your cult characters now. Fine. Hold on.
Um, uh, yeah. Fuck my life. Anyway. <laughs> um, uh, with the house? Uh, what does she wish with the house right now? Uh, she wishes uh, the house would have taken her instead of Tyson. Huh. That's what you're pretty sure you read from Garnet. Okay. After that moment of, of being able to see through that public facing mask, that facade, Denver will kind of get a look of sympathy on his face and then busy himself with something else regarding the house. Probably like um, fiddling with curtains or something, if anything. <laughs> it's fear and sin. You're just going to have that conversation for a while. Uh I think at some point Sin is going to make it even more awkward and go, oh yeah, my family's dead. <laughs> you, I'm you really right. sorry. I didn't do it. I I know you didn't. It was a train accident. Um, I'm sorry. I, I kind of remember your mom like being cool with us. Yeah, she... I rem I remember we make cookies and, and stuff. She yeah, she was cool. But uh, yeah, they're all dead. I'm real sorry. Thanks. You still hang out in the kitchen? Uh, we gotta figure out how we're gonna get out of here soon. I. What of what do you believe is happening right now? All right. Tyson was kind of weird. Kind of crazy. I'm coming around to the idea that he's not wrong. That Eleanor is some kind of alien and we're in a spaceship. That is like legit the only explanation I can think for what's going on. Because <clears throat> the other stuff, like that we're in hell or whatever, that is just too crazy. I think if you want us to get out of here, you need to open yourself up to the idea that the hell thing is not so crazy. Because, uh, Something is coming. And it's bad. And there's some really bad people that presumably they're bad, I don't know. Uh, powering it. Uh, and they're what helped bring Garnet back. And uh, okay. there's something else coming too. And so you can see Sephira start to open her mind to what you're saying. And like, it is probably only Sin who could have done this now that they have like that fragment of memory back. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, all right. Uh, how do we prepare? Like, it's been years since I prayed. Oh, I don't know. I haven't prayed in... And she, thinks she remembers she just really prayed like not long ago uh, with some very interesting results. Uh, she's like, well, I'm sure if we're, I mean, the, the point is you're supposed to have faith in something, right? That something is listening. Okay. Um, I did a stint in AA and like that didn't really work, but um, uh, I opened myself up to a higher power. 
Help. <clears throat> okay. What's Thomas, Billy, and Denver doing? You realize Eleanor's no longer in the dining room. So right around this time, Thomas would have gone over to Denver <clears throat> and been like, hey, so that was kind of weird, right? Yeah, it was a... Uh, yeah, I mean, memory is popping up out of nowhere. Yeah. That, uh, apparently Ghost guy coming in. Real. Um, I'm not a ghost. You just could not hear or see me. Yeah, yeah, I, I got you, Billy Graham. I, I am not Billy Graham. That's... Anyways, before Billy came in, um, but yeah, so yeah, memories. Ah, yeah, um, sorry about all your tech that uh, um, our dead friend smashed. I, I mean, I can sucks. I can get more. Um, all right, look, I'm not good with people, so uh, I, I guess I'll just get to the point. So I know that we kind of like. Well, I mean, now I remember. So, yeah, after we graduated, you know, we, we lost touch and uh, kind of my fault. Uh, you know, graduating high school, new life, turning over a new leaf. Yeah, you know, it wasn't because I had a sketchy. Yeah, yeah, no, it was totally we lost touch. Yeah, but you don't have to worry about it because I know all that already. Because it wasn't like, wait, what were you saying? What? Uh, phones. I definitely switched phone numbers. I know. Yeah, I, I have it. That sounds like a fable to me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the raid, Fabled 52. Yes, thank oh, you for the that raid. Was smooth. Uh, that was smooth. Yeah, I noticed that you changed it, but I found it. And I'm pretty sure I still have it. Wait. Did you did you stalk me? I mean, kinda. <laughs> I like the internet, and you know, you can find things on the internet. I uh like yeah, and re can... and reads off <laughs> current address. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, all, all my I don't know why I know this now. I Weird. I would like to ask God a question. Yes. Not the preacher. The preacher can not have to intercede. It's fine. Um, <laughs> uh, so would, since Thomas has apparently <laughs> done a lot of research on Denver since they parted ways, how much would Thomas know about Denver's backstory? As much that's as you would to, like to reveal. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's entirely up to you. It's your character. So there's just this weird blip of time that Denver doesn't have anything on the internet. Just maybe like trying to think of how many years would be reasonable for this backstory most of you are in your 30s i think and the flashback was in the 90s so it could be as many as 20 years depending on your age it's probably why i gave up i couldn't find you anymore Do yeah there's a weird span of like we'll we'll go with nine years where denver has no record on the internet. Yeah, so so uh, I get, you know, um, phone numbers, right? Right. You, uh, you've been computering. Yeah, what, and what I else mean, have you, you been know, up to? I mean, I, I, I dabble on the on the internet, you know, here and there. But, uh, what do you do? Yeah, this is weird. Just, just a little. 
can can we talk about this? Can we get out of the house and then get coffee later? Uh, and at that, Denver starts blushing curiously, and he's like, uh, y- "Yes, that would be. You know, if we survive, I could really use a good coffee." I mean, and even if we don't, we could just come back like Billy here. He seems to be all right. Did not come yeah. back from anywhere. I have been here the entire time. You I didn't mean anything not... about it, Billy. No, I'm you... just saying everybody's dying in this house and they're coming back to life. So we have a pretty good chance of not dying. I, well, except, you know, Tyson over there. Or Tyson. It is the will of God that brings us back in this place of evil. So try not to go um, on his bad side. Billy, that makes no sense. As opposed to everything else that's happening here? No, none of this makes any sense. Then why not put your faith in something more powerful? More powerful. <clears throat> Can I hear <laughs> Garden <laughs> say? <laughs> Garden's not in the room. She left. Muttered something about finding a restroom. Billy, I'm not exactly one for God. Maybe there's something out there, whether it starts with a G, I don't know. If there was ever a place to find him, this is it. I believe in the web. And the truth that it holds. So I will keep my faith in technology. Thomas, something builds the web. Don't worship the web, As worship spider. the spider. So you heard it first from him, Thomas. You must worship spiders. Not God. <sighs> Invert is an analogy. A... What an analogy is? Do Not you? stupid. Yes! Actually, for your information, I have a degree, and I'm a librarian. Oh, excellent. Which is why I was smart enough to move away from Christianity, my friend. Not that I don't enjoy these memories. While they they were fun and slightly awkward. Why are you here? Why am I here? Yeah. I was guided here. You needed my help. Or I didn't need your help. He needed your help, and you didn't come through. I w- arrived the same time you all did. I've been here since when he was breaking your computers, from when S- uh, Safira tried to get into the car. I I've seen everything that's been going on. I've I've been here the entire time. Denver, did you see him? I didn't see him. I didn't see him. We were all what were you doing here. anyway? I've been yelling at you all to stop being ridiculous, to stop letting this house influence you, to stop letting evil wash upon you like the waves on the shore, to be the rock and not the sand. But I, I don't like even know what rock that means. music. Do you know how to get out of the house? No, no, I don't know what happened with the house. I know that you let Tyson push everyone around and and, and delve into his own madness. I mean, that's hey, everyone always, needs that's, a hobby. That's always been his thing. You knew he was dangerous from when he got here. Why did why did you all just stand around? Why are we all like, okay, no, it is okay. We've got to get everyone together. We shouldn't be separated. Obviously, Eleanor is... I believe she's drinking in the other room. And God knows what she go has going on through her head. Her house is obviously a place of great disturbance. Saphir and Sin are catching up, but we should stay together. Let's get everyone back together. Okay. 
I, mean, I, I, I said I'd, I'd trust you, so I'll... I'm, I'm... I will follow your lead. Excellent. Good. Uh, um, I'll, run, I'll run into the kitchen. You can run through the kitchen door and disappear. Shit. <laughs> what about the rest of you? Um, you don't see this. You just see him go in the kitchen and assume he's in there with Saphira and Sin. I'm actually going to look for Eleanor. Not in the room anymore. Slipped out during that conversation. Can I look to see if there's any clues as to where she's gone? If in another room or if in the kitchen? Sure, you could leave the room. Which way you go? Can I want to leave the room? The only way there's you'll know closed doors door. everywhere. Uh-huh. Actually, he's gonna go and knock on every one of the closed doors and be like, "Eleanor, that doesn't you in there?" Doesn't doesn't make any result happen. Then he will assume she's in the kitchen and head to the kitchen. Denver disappears. What about Billy? I'm. I mean, I would kind of just do the same thing. I would still be walking around, calling out for Eleanor, trying to find her. You disappear once you go through a doorway. Severe and sin. Thirty minutes pass. What do you do? Uh, I guess we should go check on them. Yeah. I kind of expected them to try to drag us back in there for something. Or maybe Eleanor ate them. Maybe. Or yeah. maybe we should go check. Yeah. She does, you know. All right. You head into the dining room and disappear. Safira and Sin, you walk through the door to the dining room and end up in that old room that was your favorite to make out in. It's the same for Thomas and Denver. Billy, you pop out into a hallway full of rooms, and one of them, the door is slightly ajar, and there's a lot of noise coming from that room. If you've ever seen the TV show Supernatural, it's like when Dean loses his temper and has to break everything for a minute. Except it's not Dean, it's Garnet. Or like that that infamous scene from the new Star Wars movies. Billy and Eleanor, you can go first. Oh, hi. Eleanor, hello. Hi. <laughs> you just uh... gonna open the door for her destroying <laughs> the room and say hi? She, so she's just smashing the room? She is just, yeah, raging yeah. across the room, breaking shit. Yeah, hi. She's like <laughs> mid-toss of a fucking chair against the wall. And like, she turns at you like wild. She's just like, What? the fuck do you want? Talk to you. No, because you're going to make me feel things. No, thank you, Billy. You can keep your religion and your preachiness and your feel-good feelings and get the fuck out of this room. Okay. You're obviously upset, but I wouldn't be making you feel things. Looking around the room, you obviously already are. So, what would talking to me change? Do not test me in this house. Would you shoot me the way you shot Tyson? Just for talking to you? No. Then I'll I would have never been friends with any of you in the first place. So you wish to change the past. I would have changed a lot of things and confiding in all of you would have been one of them. So you, Billy, are not my favorite person right now. And if Denver was right here, I would have probably killed him by now. So get the fuck out. Uh, Billy will cross his arms in front of him. Uh, Actually kind of, actually first reach out and pull out the cross that he would wear oh and lay it in front of him <laughs> and then just cross his arms in front of him in a defiant I'm not going anywhere stance if you wish to continue destroying the room you obviously may this is your house but you're right it is my house and such a beautiful wonderful lovely house God has blessed you with so much God doesn't give a damn 
about me and neither did you when I needed you, Billy. And perhaps that little trinket of knowledge is still locked away in your fucking mind. So, get out. Tell me how if you have knowledge that we don't, share it. Obviously something is going on here. Billy, you didn't believe me the first time. Why the hell would I tell you a second time? You are 15 years too late. No amount of I found Jesus is going to help you. I did not find Jesus. Jesus was always there for me. You just reminded me of the meme I just found Jesus behind the couch. Yes, <laughs> Jesus is behind the couch and that lamp and those curtains. Hold Eleanor. Yeah, I'm listening. Okay. You're disturbed. You're angry, you're lashing out. Uh, can we check something here? Uh, charisma, charisma. Of course, it's all the way at the top. Scroll so slow. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you're obviously disturbed, and you're angry, and you're lashing out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But great deduction, Billy. Would not trust me. Perhaps you should re-analyze what it is you think I am. And I'll take the cross it back and I'll tuck it back away. If that's not going to work here, then it can go back in the pocket. Your god has no power in my house. Then tell me what does what does have power in my house yes me perfect then tell me the power to get everyone out of here safely or why you've brought us here oh great and powerful eleanor i I didn't bring you here. Then what did? Magic? Hmm. So, correct me if I'm wrong. But you have power here. You are the one who holds power here. But you did not bring us. You cannot get us out. And you say, quote unquote, general magic brought us here. And they say, <laughs> and they say, this <laughs> is useless and powerless. You're really trying to have me kill two characters in a row, aren't you, Steve? No. <laughs> Very well, Eleanor. If you are, if you cannot offer us anything, then stay in your room and throw your tantrum. I'll see you back on Earth. 
You'll and if see I... me. Never, okay. Billy. Because even if I did have this power to magically poof us out of this house and out of hell or wherever the fuck we are, you would be the last person on my list. I would not save you if you were the last person on this planet or in this existence. Can, can I try to use a power here? Sure, what you got? I would like to use Fort Tongue. Okay. And I'm trying to manipulate her to reveal something about this house, what's going on this whole scene. Um... So I'm hoping to get something out of this, uh, specifically using that power. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. D2. D2. Yikes. Yikes. Oh, crap. Uh, are there like rerolls from votes or anything like that? Votes give you a plus two to the result. Okay. Okay, I'm using plus two for my vote from earlier to make a success. All okay. Right. Then I will also do that. Four, seven, to make that a ten. Which bumps that up from a complete failure to like the, the minimum success with complication. Bell. What do you want your power to do precisely? And then I'll tell you what you actually so get. So the three things for that tier, choose one option from the list below, but there's also a complication chosen by the GM. They see you as a friend they can turn to, they fall in love with you, they feel betrayed, spurned, humiliated, or manipulated whenever you abuse their trust. <sighs> I really needed that 15 one. Thanks, Betty. What? I will boost Satan, I mean Garnet. <laughs> nice. I mean, Mel Adams also uh, summoned the Elder Gods on us. Thanks, and Mel. somebody redeemed for study the Forbidden Tome, whatever that means. For Billy. Oh, for Billy. Um, none of these really apply. I was just hoping to, you know, the one that I was trying to do is in the 15 plus tier where they reveal a weakness where I can exploit later. Um, right. None of the ones under 10 to 14 really apply here. So you can try it again later. Yeah. I feel betrayed, spurned. Eh. All right. You, you push against Garnet with your ability. But it's like the house gets in the way. You don't know how, but it's that vibe like the aura of the house is crushing you, distracting you. Making your words not quite as venomous as you would normally make them in this <laughs> instance. Distracting you. Whereas Garnet mutters something under her breath. It doesn't sound like English. Nothing hmm. happens immediately, though. Okay. This is an absolutely... In all other circumstances, this would be an absolutely beautiful house. I'll just kind of admire some of the things, even though they're half destroyed. Absolutely just oh, beautiful. Yes, I agree, Billy. It used to be a very loving and safe home. Oh. <laughs> He kind of waves that off like that's not what he meant, as he just admires, like, an expensive thing on a dresser. Door swings open. A gentleman walks in. You're all aware, including Billy, that there was staff here before. This guy is... Uh, is my just under... Mohawk but butler? No. <laughs> oh, new, new person. This guy's just under six feet. 
Rail thin, porcelain pale, one eye is milked over, scar on his face, potential trigger warning. Cut marks all up and down his arms, both ways, all up into his short sleeve and up harder than you can see. Uh, nails painted a multitude of colors. Uh, the pinky and middle finger of which are sharpened and longer than the rest on both hands. Wearing some interesting rings. Uh, tight leather shirt, tight leather pants. Fantastic fancy belt. Uh, the shirt's one of the ones where the short sleeve comes up to here. It's not quite a tank top, but almost. His hair is completely shaved on one side and cut close to the skin in swirl patterns on the other, but not completely shaved. Walks right up to Garnet. Drapes an uh, arm over her shoulder and says, Is this guy bothering you, Miss Garnet? You immediately recognize this as Sid Garnet, but you don't know why you know the name or have any memory of this person. But you trust him. His voice is soft. But extremely fucking dangerous. Doc her, Martin's on. Her eyes level with Billy. Are you bother- going... Am I bothering you? Are you going to leave like I asked? I believe the lady of the house wants to smash the fuck out of her room. (laughs) He looks at her and smiles and absentmindedly pulls out a switchblade and does tricks with it you've never seen with one hand. Happy smashing. And I'll leave. Sid looks at Garnet and says, I'll be around, my lady. Thank you. Takes the switchblade, makes a new mark. Swipes some of the blood on his finger. And marks the side of your cheek with it in a familiar manner and leaves. You feel better. You gain plus one resolve. Oh. From his sacrifice. Oh. Great. This is fine. Plus one resolve. saunters out of the room. Is that under stability? Yeah, your stability is at full. You weren't at full. Garnet is always one level below full, but now you're at full. <laughs> now we're going to switch back to Sphere and Sin in the awkward teenage makeout bedroom. Uh, so, Sephira, just like, ah. Uh... And then we'll turn around to look at the door, like where we just came from. Yeah, I don't remember this being off the kitchen. But uh, earlier, I did find myself in a part of the house, I guess in the house somewhere that I wouldn't have expected either. So maybe this is normal right now. I'm sorry. Uh, do you uh, do you remember when I, I kind of died? Earlier, like maybe half an hour ago, I guess. You do, Sophia. Uh, uh, if I remember correctly, though, Sophia was looking for a fuse box because I was playing Yvette. Yes, but you still remember somehow because I give you that weird connection to Yvette at the end. Okay. Um,. Oh, well, then that's screwed up. Does Saphira remember killing me? No, it's Saphira doesn't remember being okay. Yvette, but it's like Saphira remembers observing what Yvette does. Cool. Like the top down. Um, like past life memory. Well, anyway, I, I did that. And mm-hmm. I remember a gray room that I'd never seen before. So it, 
you know, just, just saying that there's weirdness going on in the house right now. <laughs> Do we want to see what happens when we open the door? I mean, I'm not going to lie, I've got some pretty happy memories that were made in this room. So I kind of don't want to leave. But I think we have to. Yeah. Like, I think maybe the house is trying to distract us or, or trick us in some way. Yeah. Okay, then. Miss... I work for the mob lady. Uh, do you... I'll, I'll, I don't know. Do you want to open the door or should I do it? Let's do it together on three. Okay. So I sort of picture that as, uh, I guess Sin has like the door handle and Saphir is sort of like helping to push it open. That makes yeah. sense. And we'll see if that works if we get out of this room. Okay. Roll see through the illusion. Great. Oh god. Yep, this is this is totally fine. M uh, minus two for this one. Check your side, Billy. Oh. Fourteen. So a successful complication. Same, I got a ten. <clears throat> Okay. You're able to exit the room into the actual hallway. I need you both to roll. Keep it together. Uh, should I... Given my character's stability, I believe I have a... Yeah, I have a negative one to keep it together. Does my sheet account for that, or should I work it into the box? The sheet probably does not account for that unless you have it checked off somewhere. I, I do. I have it checked off on the box, I think. Then yeah, it should yeah. work. Okay, You can cool. also do the uh, the thing that you can do in Astral, where you just mouse over the box, and it shows you the roll and the result and all the modifiers that got added in. Oh, red. Yeah. Anyway, I rolled a 16. Go me. Uh, 10. Okay. <coughs> uh, minus one stability for Sin. I'm doing great. Denver, your random comment about your previous character. You two manage to step through the door and you feel reality warp as you push against the house to make it go where you're supposed to go, not where it wants you to go. And you step out into the hallway face to face with some kind of monstrosity. Don't you mean Safira, not Denver? I mean Safira and Sin. Denver is playing the monstrosity. Oh. Oh. Hey. <laughs> You're not here for these two, but these two are here. You could play. You always enjoy playing. <clears throat> Describe for them what you look like first. Do I have do I have a prop I can use? This is good enough. Uh so you <laughs> sorry. Um you come face to face with a very pale and frail looking, I think he was a redhead. Yeah. I guess it doesn't sure. really matter now. Um, and he is just covered in silver swirls. And if you look closer, there's wires poking out of his skin as Big Dad tells Rosie that he's going to bed. And <laughs> and um, he kind of tilts his head. <laughs> um, Kay knows exactly who this is. And he just 
He looks at you. He gives this big smile, and all of the teeth are also silver. And you can notice that in some places where the metal wiring surfaces and has an end, it looks like cutlery. This is Benny, who is now purgatide. Essentially, it's a Cenobite. Face-to-face with a Cenobite. Yep. Who's in front of Benny right now? Safira and Sen. <laughs> uh, does this count as something that I could use a cult for, if only to learn? Yes, what's roll about it. To fuck me up. I'm looking. There we go. Both of them are full of delicious, delicious sin. Uh, twelve. Okay. Yeah. This is a thing called a purgatide. It senses your sin, and if your sin is great enough, or your need is great enough, it will show you a place where the sensation is so ex- is so explicit that there's no difference between pain and pleasure. We'll reform you and reshape you every day into a new form. And we'll let you repeat your sins over and over and over again for eternity. Oh, hello. How can I help you today? can and sin turns around and tries to open the door to go back in the room oh i disagree i think i could help you quite a bit i have marvelous things to show you marvelous wonderful things would Uh, you like to see your past sins perhaps and no, I know what those are, and I don't need to relive them. Thank you. And then uh, you see Safira, because up till that moment, you've been focusing on sin. Oh, that one's delicious. It's a feast to last for decades. Uh, I would to like the point to that it. you would just push sin out of your way to get to Safira. He, so, he doesn't quite shove her out of the way. He will delicately wrap his hand around her shoulder and gently maneuver around while so this, roll avoid this... harm sin sorry Safira, because when he touches you it's like paper yeah. cut but steel wire so what Safira is trying to do right now <clears throat> as soon as she witnessed that exchange between this creepy guy and, and sin grab sin by the shoulder back into the bedroom and shut the door I rolled roll five. Excellent. Please take one serious wound as the gentle touch lacerates deeply into your shoulder. Yeah. The wire is cut. You shiver. You kind of liked it. Now I'm just scooping Sin back into the bedroom and slamming the door shut. You can hear on the outside of the door just metal scraping like tines of a fork scraping down the door and then a, a rap with the back of the hand I know exactly what you need to make the pain feel so delicious Won't you? Uh, I would like to tend Sin's wound and ignore the creepy motherfucker on the other side of the door. I'll Light come begins. out of play. It's fine. Light begins to burn through the cracks in the wall behind you. Uh-oh. Like where the wall panels come together. Light begins to burn through. A really weird, bright, pale light. <clears throat> Is that Benny or is that another Cenobite? Well, that's the that's the rest of them. You weren't the only one. Oh, shit. 
Someone called on the house for protection, and then elder gods were summoned multiple times. <coughs> you realize that that light is not good. All right, Sin, I have no idea what to do. I mean, facing one Cenobite versus a whole army of them. Like, and I say this as I'm, me. like, wrapping a pillowcase around her cuts. In the meantime, while Sin tries to think, you can roll, uh, uh, act under pressure. Thirteen. Your wound is stabilized, Sin, so you can check the stabilized box. Cool. Sorry, I'm trying to find what bound does again. It's under my advantages, so I hope it's... Here, I got a boost from Lupine Vendetta. Yay! Also, totally, totally look at my Zoom name. I'm very proud of it right now. <laughs> That's nice. pretty good. Ah, and Sen. Sen gets boost, too. Yay. Did you find a bound? Uh, I know I'm close to it in the PDF. So. Page 83. I have it on page 113 in my notes. Oh. What are you trying to get? I think my Betty gave me a boost. Bound? <laughs> Bound? Uh, like, maybe the basic description is earlier, but, like, the full text is... Uh, hold on. Let me... Okay, I found it. Oh, I posted it in the Sunday round, too, as well. <clears throat> oh, I should have done this at the start of the session. Darn it. Okay, I was supposed to do it at the start of the session, so I'll just make a note for myself to try to remember to do that later. Next session. Assuming we're alive. Billy. Did you continue wandering off or were you like, fuck it, I'm gonna go back and, and I'm not I'm not quitting. After that weird encounter. Yeah. Do you actually wander off, or do you change your mind halfway through and go back to actually confront Eleanor again? What would Billy do? Okay. Mark. Thomas and Benny, what are you doing? Thomas and Benny, Denver. or Thomas, Thomas and Denver? Denver. That's I mean, or, you know. <laughs> Who knows what Thomas is into, I guess. But anyways, Thomas in Denver. So we go through a door. Oh, yeah. You end up in your makeout bedroom, too. It No, it is not a bedroom. It is the library. Yes, it is a rich person's hoity-toity library. Which one? There are several in this house, and you could not use the main one. That would explain all the things that I would find in that library after you guys left. <laughs> um, it's the first floor library, second floor library, and a third floor. <laughs> They're reading rooms, but you know. I like the number three. Okay, third floor it is. Carry on. Um... Oh, this looks familiar. Yeah, um, actually, I don't know how we got here. It's kind of freaking me out a little because yeah, I thought... walked into the kitchen. Yeah, that was. That was the plan, right? Like we were going to go get Sin and Safira. Yeah. Hmm. 
We're kind of fucked, aren't we? I mean, I guess we could look around here to try and find a way out or something. Uh, yeah, we could try heading out that door. Maybe it'll go back to the room that we were in. That's what Billy walks through the door. Just exploring the house at this point. It's clear these two are having a very awkward moment, Billy. <laughs> oh, hey, it's Billy. Uh... You also remember the significance of this room to them. Having walked in on them before. How did you get up to this floor so quick? You're on the same floor, because remember when you walked through the door, shit got weird. So to you, yeah, you it, just it... walked down the hallway. <laughs> oh, well, we walked into the kitchen, and then all of a sudden the kitchen wasn't the kitchen. It was the reading room where Thomas and I once shared a very... Uh, anyway, um... Do you remember when I read Shakespeare to you here? That was weird. <laughs> that wasn't weird. That was really sweet. <laughs> make out. Who's nobody said make I mean... out. Yeah, exactly. And and maybe being scared turns me on a little. You don't don't judge. So now that people can hear me. Since but are I we was listening? Muted, oh. <laughs> oh, that was <laughs> Oh, you were audience muted. Was... I see. Yes. <laughs> oh Oops. yes. That was a fun one sided conversation. <laughs> oh no. Perhaps, Dude. once again, again, perhaps the severity of the situation is not sinking in. And we all need to understand that we need to stick together, okay? We are stronger as a whole than we are as a part. So I mean, that was the plan. We went into okay. the kitchen to get you two, Sin and Sephira. You two yeah. came to this room of sin inside this world of evil. So please... I don't care what you do. Hold on a second. Are you victim blaming? No. I'm telling you. Yes, you, you are. To... We didn't come here on purpose. <laughs> come <You> didn't. here. <laughs> you didn't. No, we you, were headed to the kitchen. The two of you did not come to this room alone <laughs> on purpose. No. We well, didn't. It starts to spill in from between one of the stacks of books. Weird pale white light. Oh, that looks familiar. That, that that happened the last time we were in this house, and it turned out really bad. But I don't quite remember what happened. Also, no, that's not important right now. We need to get out of here. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So please, let's go. No, thank you. Door, Fine. door, go. Go, door. Whoever, well... It, I don't know if whoever is closest to the door wants to open it, or if Denver will just march to it and yank it open. We switched to the bedroom. What's Eleanor doing now that Billy's uh, left? Uh... Processing? These are a lot of emotion shit. She had really, like locked in there uh that aren't locked anymore so uh and so far the only person she felt safe with was sid and then sid left the room so you can stop him on his way out you can just like call for him scurries out the bedroom door to poke out her head to see where he went he's sauntering down the hallway but you could stop him Hey, Sid. Yes, my lady. Why do you call me my lady? Well, obviously, because I am yours. That's the bargain we have struck. 
Bargain. Yes. You've been teaching me in exchange for me feeding you. I know this is going to sound really dumb as your teacher, Sid, uh, but what have I been teaching you? Power, of course. How to snatch it from beyond death. My he closes hell. his eyes and he's whispering something you don't know what it is making a really weird high-pitched noise that's somewhere between a moan and a pain gasp uh-huh. and he holds his hand out and a black flame appears and just floats there he opens his eyes they're unfocused the pupils are exploded like he's high power and he starts tossing it back and forth like it's a ball between his hands He closes his hand and it disappears. The cost is high, but the rewards are worth it. Do you not remember? You said this might happen. I... I don't remember. Ah, yes. Would you like me to help you remember? (laughs) Do it up in the corner like, yes! Do it! (laughs) Uh... She closes the distance between her and Sid. Um, Does not flinch at all. Is not scared of you whatsoever. She wasn't doing it to be scared. But that's a new experience for you. Most people flinch when you close in on them. That's fair. These mooks all fucking flinch. This guy perfectly relaxed. Yes, I want to remember. Of course, my lady. Looks around. Hallway's got stuff in it. Grabs a vase, dumps out the whatever was in it, throws it on the ground so it shatters, maintaining eye contact you with the whole time, and then immediately drops to his knees on the glass full force. As the glass embeds itself into his kneecaps, you all enter your next flashback, which is where we pause until next week. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh ho, 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 the French! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, not sorry about everything you guys are having to deal with right now. I, I'm still alive. You are. I have a Benny reprise. I'm happy. We have more next week, too. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for this week, dear viewers. However, we will return to continue this tale of madness on time next week. <laughs> Until then... We would like to thank you for taking this journey with us into the depths of the abyss and the inferno as they begin to slowly learn their own purgatory and the sins of their past. However, between now and then, our show has many awesome adventures and other terrifying tales happening. On Mondays, we play Delta Green, followed by Mythos World. On Tuesdays, we are playing Black Void for a few more weeks before it switches over to Mecha Nonsense Forever. It's going to be awesome. Wednesday is Octone Cthulhu. I think they only have one session left before we are might be switching to the one ring. And then that'll be a hell of a thing. On Thursdays, we have uh, Mage the Awakening followed by Pathfinder 2E, a terrifying tale of the macabre gothic. On Fridays, Masks of Nyarlathotep run by our very own Rachel followed by 5E Scarred Lands awesomeness. On Saturday, more 5E awesomeness in a homebrew world. Followed by this game, or not this game, followed by SCP the RPG once again. And on Sundays, we return to uh, a brand new 5e setting full of dinosaurs and awesome barbarian epicness. A brand new Kickstarter kickstarted product by Atlas Games, the same people who bring you Unknown Armies. And then once again, return to Cult Sunday nights. We would also like to thank... Roll20 for being our virtual tabletop of choice for this game, along with uh, the Helm Gas Cult Divinity Lost soundtrack, Somnium Music, myself, and Ghost Stories Incorporated for the tunes you're hearing. Heroes of Madness and Doom, tell us who you are, who you played, and who your vote this week is for favorite player 
audience, you can vote also for one player each week, giving them a boost that they can use to hopefully die less in future sessions. Again. Nine's money. Oh, I forgot we had dice pools to steal from. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey everybody, I've been uh, both Denver and Benny, who if you want to find out who Benny is, go into our archives on YouTube and find our other past cult, Delicious Dark Goodness. And I now return to being Ambrose, who is definitely not secretly a Cenobite. Anyway. Ah, uh, my vote for tonight is going to go for Steve, because you made a secondary character I can really hate! God, oh yeah, the prophet I is the best. I have so much religious trauma just bubbling up to the surface, thanks. He's so much worse than you can imagine. Yeah, he is. The storyteller is excited. That's fine, I almost had the house just smush him. Uh, speaking of which, hello everybody, I am Steve, uh, or, yeah, yeah, hi, I'm Steve, <laughs> you can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade, and, um, my pronouns are he, him, tonight I played both Tyson, who got diedified, and then Billy Wayne, who is a preacher man, who likes expensive things, um, my vote tonight goes to a Dwayne, um, or playing into Tyson looking for the microchip and holding a knife to him and trusting that moment that I wasn't going to stab and eat him. So, yeah, that was fun. And thanks to Savannah as well, also, for the gunfight. That was fun. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, hi, I'm Savannah. You can find me online at Miss Missy Mo Fox. Uh, you can find me. I played Garnet, aka uh, Rapture Princess. Thank you, Lupine Vendetta. Um, what did I do? You can find me next uh, tomorrow, Monday evening, Mythos World, playing Hyacinth. Uh, my vote is hard. I feel like I have <laughs> to give it to Steve since I <laughs> ganked his character. <laughs> uh, but no, um, that fucking uh, yelling match emotion scene in the in the room, priceless. Uh, I enjoy being able to uh, let off some steam. It's fun. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello everyone, my name is Rachel. I am Stolen Fires pretty much everywhere. Uh, and assuming that my voice <laughs> holds out, uh, you can find me uh, tomorrow, uh, starting at 4 p.m. Pacific, uh, over at Occupational Hazard, LLC, <clears throat> where I am pinch hitting Milwaukee Bleeds, uh, V5 actual play. Uh, I'm playing uh, Gangrel Bahari because we're playing around with the new Sabat rules. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Um, and then I am going straight from that into here uh, for the cult show, which should also be a lot of fun. Uh, and then Wednesday, I'm over at Plastic Age Plays playing Scarlands. Uh, Thursday, the second to last episode of my Changeling show over at Onyx Path. And then back here on Friday, running masks of Nyarlath Hotep. So, yeah, busy. Uh, gonna have a lot of cough drops and tea with honey and lemon. Uh, and my vote goes to Rosie because that was um, real fun how our dynamic changed. That's you, Thomas. Yeah, that's me. I was muted. I wasn't even talking, but <laughs> so I guess it didn't matter. <laughs> Uh, but yes, I am a, once again Dwayne, uh, known on the interwebs and the deep webs as Made of Kimchi. Uh, 
Next time you guys will see me will be Tuesday, being the arbiter for Black Void here on Purple Tales. Uh, ooh. I uh, I wanted to vote for two people tonight, but I can only vote for one, so I will vote for the I will vote for the one who played multiple characters in the same scene, and I have a feeling is going to get me killed in some way. Steve, you have my vote. Thank you. Hello, I am Rosie, regular size mom. You can find me on Twitter at mom underscore sized, and you can find me next here on Thursday playing Pathfinder, and then here on Sundays playing Colt. Uh, keep an eye on Martlet Games for some stuff that will be dropping soon. Should be fun. Uh, but also, you can find me over on Carrying Puppet Studios. We're starting our game of Cyberpunk, Displaced and Disorderly, on the 23rd. That'll be fun. And, you know, just, just awesomeness in general. Keep watching Purple Tales. You got to vote, Rosie. Doi, I'm still awake. <laughs> uh, let's... <laughs> Yeah, uh, you were all fantastic in so many ways, uh, but I am going to give that vote to Rachel because I was going to play Sin as just like totally fuck all these people. Like, I just got to get the hell out of here. And now she's like, well, damn it. Like, I might have to try to keep one of them alive even though this weird, creepy thing that brought me back is probably going to demand them at some point. So that's just awful. I so mean, they, yeah. Weird, creepy thing aside, that was basically my arc is to fear of this game yeah. as well. Like, got to get out. Oh, I care about some more now. Yeah, it's awkward. But uh, so, yeah, vote for you. Thank you. As usual, awesome being awesome to each other. But your audience, that's all the time we have for this week. Come check out Delta Green tomorrow with the ever awesome Eric. As his tale escalates to its ultimate end of everything for in a dirge for the end of the world. Until then, good night. Sleep well, if you can. <laughs>